The squeeze theorem states that if g of x is less than or equal to f of x is less than or equal to h of x on a certain interval, and the limit of g of x as x approaches a equals the limit of h of x as x approaches a equals l, then by the squeeze theorem, the limit of f of x as x approaches a is equal to l. This sounds really complicated and there's a lot of limits and a lot of numbers and a lot of symbols going on up here, but we're going to break it down just by doing an example. Let g and h be the functions defined by g of x equals negative 3x squared plus 6x minus 3 and h of x equals 1 fourth x minus 1 squared. If f is a function that satisfies this inequality for all x values, what is the limit of f of x as x approaches 1? What I'm going to do first in this example is to set up my problem. I have my inequality right here. I'm going to add a limit notation onto the front of each of these, and I'm going to be looking for the limit as x approaches 1, because that's what I'm asked. So the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 1 of h of x. The squeeze theorem allows me to set up my problem like this. It allows me to stick a limit notation in front of each of these terms in my inequality. Now, instead of writing g of x, I'm going to write the actual function that we're given for g of x. So this will become the limit as x approaches 1 of negative 3x squared plus 6x minus 3 is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x. I'm not writing anything in there because I'm not given a value for f of x. That's what I'm trying to find. Is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 1 of 1 fourth x minus 1 squared. This is a continuous function, so I can use direct substitution to find the limit. I'm going to plug in 1 into this function. And now I've simplified it to get 0. I'm going to do the same thing with this function over here. 1 fourth times x minus 1 squared is also a continuous function, so I can use direct substitution. And now I'm just copying down limit of f of x as x approaches 1 in the middle here for all of my simplifying. And at this point, I have 0 is less than or equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 is less than or equal to 0. So by the squeeze theorem, the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 equals 0. That's what the squeeze theorem allows me to do. So I need to write by the squeeze theorem the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 equals 0. And that would be my answer. So I want to show a graph of these functions to you to help you understand it a little bit better. This top function is h of x and the bottom function is g of x. The reason that it's called the squeeze theorem is because we don't, we don't really know what f of x is, but we do know that it is being squeezed between g and h of x. When we set up this inequality, g of x is less than or equal to f of x is less than or equal to h of x, what we're really saying is that the function f is squeezed between these two functions. So maybe function f looks like this. Maybe function f looks like this. But however function f looks, we know that it's being squeezed between these two functions at this specific point. So we can use the squeeze theorem to help us find the limit, even though we don't know what f of x actually is. Here we have a very similar example, but with slightly different functions. And this time our inequality is only on the interval from negative 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2. So only when that is true, function f satisfies the inequality h of x is less than or equal to f of x is less than or equal to g of x. And we're being asked to find the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x. Because 0 is within this range of negative 2 to 2, we can use the squeeze theorem in this situation. So what I'm going to do first is to set up my limit notation. So I'll do limit as x approaches 0 of h of x is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of g of x. 
And now I'm going to plug in my actual functions instead of just writing h of x. Now I can use direct substitution with this function and this function because they are both continuous. So this will become sine of 0 is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x is less than or equal to 4 times 0 squared plus 3. So 0 is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x is less than or equal to 3. Unfortunately, the window between 0 and 3 has a lot of different numbers. It could be 0 0.0001. It could be 2.9999, or it could really be anything in between. Maybe it's 2.5, maybe it's 1.67. It could be anything between 0 and 3. So in this case, while the squeeze theorem is helpful for determining what the limit is between, it doesn't give us an actual limit value. If we look at the graphs of these functions, this is the graph of h of x, and this is the graph of g of x. Um, on the interval between negative 2 and 2, we know that the limit of f of x is somewhere in between here, but we don't know where. So unfortunately, for this problem, we need to write it cannot be determined. For this example, we're going to use a slightly different setup, but we're still going to be using the squeeze theorem. We are given that g is the function g of x equals x to the fifth cosine 1 over x cubed for x not equaling 0. And it says the following inequalities are true for x not equaling 0. That means that we can use these inequalities for this situation. And it says state whether each inequality can be used to find the limit of g of x as x approaches 0. So in this situation, instead of plugging in our functions to the one on the left and the one on the right, we're going to need to plug in the function to the one in the middle. So I'm going to first write out my limit notation. The limit as x approaches 0 of negative x to the fifth is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of g of x is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of x to the fifth. Now I'm going to plug in this for g of x. Now for these functions on the side, I can use direct substitution. This one is equal to zero. The limit of negative x to the fifth as x approaches zero is equal to zero. And this one on the right is also equal to zero. So that means that we can use the squeeze theorem in this case to determine what the limit of g of x as x approaches zero is. Turns out I didn't actually need to write the function g of x down here. I could have just written limit as x approaches 0 of g of x, because that's what the function is actually asking for up here. Since it's 0 on this side and it's 0 on this side, we know that the limit is equal to 0. So yes, we can use the squeeze theorem and we can use this inequality to find the limit of g of x as x approaches 0. This next example is almost exactly the same, but it's a slightly different inequality on both sides, but I'm going to follow the same process. First, I'm going to add my limit notation. Now I'm going to use direct substitution to find each of these. Unfortunately, I ran into a bit of a problem with these because when you plug in 0, you get negative 1 over 0 cubed or negative 1 over 0, and dividing by 0 is a big no here. That means that it does not exist. So I'm getting does not exist is less than or equal to the limit of g of x as x approaches 0 is less than or equal to does not exist. So in this situation, even though it's the same on the left and the right, we can't say that the limit of g of x as x approaches 0 is does not exist because that might actually have a defined value because we know that does not exist sometimes means approaching infinity or negative infinity, and g of x might be somewhere in between there, but we just don't know. So we can't use this inequality to find the limit of g of x as x approaches 0.